Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is relaxation, hypnosis for stress, anxiety, and panic attacks. And I've got Andre in the background crunching away on his food. So this is not going to be uh, the same as the one yesterday. So I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to go old school. Go back to last week when I was doing these uh, chats. So I'm aiming to try and do another relaxation kind of I suppose I almost think of it as being like a pure relaxation recording but I have limits to when I can do them and when he's awake it's hard to get anything done because he's quite uh, active but I can still talk so if hearing him in the background is, is a is a problem then I just say turn turn off the recording um, it annoys me a bit to be honest but it's I wouldn't be without him he has to eat you know it's kind of not I'm nocturnal but he's um, whatever the the equivalent of being ambidextrous ambidextrous I can't even say the word he basically is he's asleep and awake all night and all day so he just sleeps then he gets up regardless whether it's day or night and he'll go to sleep again then he'll get up again for an hour or so and he yeah, that's kind of the way he is uh, only listen to this if you can safely <sighs> close your eyes and I could quite easily fall asleep I think so I better not close my eyes so I th I'm trying to make my podcasts corona free okay I'm trying to do that however I think um, it would be what the right word would be it'd be uh, ignorant of me to ignore what's going on especially uh, considering the raise in well, p potential rise in anxiety in people and the last couple of days I've managed to calm down a bit but it was starting to get to me over the weekend especially and uh, it's now Wednesday so I think Monday and Tuesday yesterday especially I've calmed down quite a bit I think part of it was the the lack of clarity within what the government kept telling us, you know, in England anyway, in the UK. I don't know about other countries. I know a little bit about what's going on in other countries. Um, for example, India. <sighs> Oh, you yawn. India have locked down for 21 days. America, it's really been getting worse in America, and pres the president is talking about how it's calming down when it's actually not, and how he expects everything to be over by Easter, which is in about two weeks' time. So I can't really, I don't really know what's going on there. Um, However, optimism is an amazing thing. Being optimistic 
being positive. So, you know, I don't really want to knock anyone that's able to be positive in quite negative times. But at the same time, I do, you know, I do value realism as well. A little bit of a realistic thinking. So, I thought I'd talk about how it's affected me a little bit um, regarding just just my own personal experience so it might not be of any use to anybody but it might be as well so what I noticed is just noticed I sniffed there as well I haven't I at this time of the year I get a little bit coldy but I haven't got any I've not got any of the symptoms but I notice when the when the weather changes and it's cold and then it's like quite warm and then this time of the year it's quite nice during the day but it's proper cold at night and it kind of affects me a little bit I get a bit sniffly but uh, I'm you know, I'm self-isolating just like most people. And there's been a part of me that wanted to do something. That wanted to help other people. Which is why I do these recordings, because I, I like to help others. But I wanted to do something more focused, as in... Like maybe locally or you know something concerning the current uh, pandemic thing that's going on and then the I think it's the health minister came on television saying that they wanted 250,000 volunteers to help with the NHS the health service so I volunteered I went online signed up the weird thing about it is they said they wanted people to volunteer but they didn't tell anyone how to do it I went online it took me about half an hour to actually find the correct link because the NHS website had nothing the government website had nothing I literally had to uh, I found it on I think one of the newspaper websites so that was uh or kind of a weird experience so I hope you know, I should probably be doing some volunteering but it's going to be from home phoning people up and checking that they're okay and, and it's through some kind of app that the NHS has got so I'm not sure what it is exactly but it should be okay but how this has affected me is a sense of helplessness which I only normally feel when I'm I feel that I felt that often with the anxiety feeling like I'm kind of at the whim of the anxiety and of the stress levels or with the bipolar sort of almost helpless in a wave of emotion and mood swings And then to add something real, and I'm not saying that the the feelings and my experiences aren't real, but in a way, feelings aren't real, are they? Moods aren't real. It's just a feeling. It's just an emotion, as opposed to you know imagining getting hit by a car and actually getting hit by a car both cause huge and you know tremendous emotional stress even if someone's imagining it but the actual act of getting hit by a car is way worse you know physically and emotionally 
but someone imagining that they're going to get hit by a car could stop them from going out. So it could actually almost rule their life if they have that uh, social anxiety connected with public transport or, you know, things like that. And I suppose the difference uh, is something about a real world event that has different effects well, on me anyway. There's the the kind of maybe a, a forced into reality situation where actually there are people really suffering here and perhaps I shouldn't feel so sorry for myself perhaps I should you know perhaps should those words perhaps I should stop being the centre of the universe in my own mind so there's a little bit of guilt there and then there's the the thought that actually those things that I would perhaps worry about concerning germs, being around someone that's coughing or sneezing, or you know, I've, I'm a I'm a regular hand washer normally anyway. You know, whenever I get home from being out, always wash my hands, always do, have done for years. And if I touch uh, a post, you know, if I'm on the bus and I'm putting my hand on one of the bars as I'm waiting to sort of get off, I immediately think of the germs that are on that bar. The amount of people that have put their hands there, you know. And I've kind of always, well, I don't know, I've always been like that, but I'm, I'm like that generally. And there's, there's a degree of kind of, I think from a therapeutic perspective, um, people with those issues, maybe germs and uh, fear of catching, you know, diseases from other people, there's almost, seems to be a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of, I don't know if the word disrespect would be correct, but not really taking the person seriously. You know, almost trying to tell the person, well, you, it's unlikely you're going to catch anything from them. And, you know, it's, we've all got germs, and you have to eat a lot of dirt in your life in order to be healthy and to have a, an immune system that's strong. Anyone that lives in a bubble and never gets germs or gets colds uh, end up not being able to fight off, you know, proper illnesses in the future. And, and then something like this comes along, which is affecting healthy people. It's not just unhealthy people, it's affected. And it just it affected the unhealthy people first. So they started to assume, oh, it's just elderly people with underlying health conditions that are going to be at risk, when actually they're starting to discover that's not just the case. So it brings up these things, like, okay, what? This is too real. I don't like this. This is way too real for me. Um... I kind of just wanted to go away, which is not as annoying as hearing him crunching in the background. Andre, why have you got to do that when I'm, it almost like he waits for me to start recording and he runs out to make noise, especially during these recordings for some reason. He's a weirdo. You're weird, Andre. Not as weird as me, but... And this, that realness. 
it's almost like the things that I've been fearing are actually real and that that doubt I had in my mind that maybe those fears of germs and stuff were you know potentially a little bit exaggerated you know maybe didn't need to really be concerned with stuff like that not really um, and that had a double effect of like well maybe it eases it a little bit but the other, other side kind of well I'm judging myself and now there is stuff out there that really you know we're being told by by heads of states that you can't go outside unless it's an emergency or if it's you can go out once a day to exercise and and it, for me I don't know I mean, I've, I've, I've got a friend that lives downstairs and even he won't come near me we stay apart. I see him every day. I speak to him on the phone. And he lives downstairs. I'd normally see him most days. Hang out a little bit. Um, but you know, he was at my front door and he was standing the other side of the hallway. So he needed some milk. And we just got kept away from each other. And... It's almost funny to start with, but I can see it could turn into, um, well, I don't know, making the phobia, the germ phobia stronger if I allowed it, if I don't keep check of it, because I'm not saying I've got like a major foam phobia, foam? a major germ phobia but I do have a bit of a if I'm near someone that's coughing my anxiety levels really go up uh, very quickly and I've got, I know how to control it and I know how to reduce it and how to get into a more of a relaxed state and there's certain um, things that I've talked about in previous recordings that can be done that can reduce those levels but I had that reaction when there wasn't anything really not realistically to be concerned about but now there is and it's it's I find that a bit, a little bit confusing. That like my reaction to it, I mean. So something that I kind of <laughs> needed to do. Sorry, I'm laughing at him. He's having some kind of a hyper thing at the moment. One of the things that I I did to do and it wasn't optional is I needed to reduce my anxiety levels because I, fi I found myself moving into depression and I just can't I can't you know I'm not prepared to go down that route not because it felt like it was really getting things were getting dark in my mind and if that happens then I stop making recordings and this this isn't the only podcast I do I do some others as well and the idea of um I started to feel hopeless and meaningless, you know. That's, that's how I started to feel. And 
and this was at the weekend, like last week, the weekend, mainly the weekend really, and it started to get too much. It was an almost like an overload of uh, news, an overload of um, negativity, really. Now, I'm not a huge fan of false positivity. It's just me. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just I quite like realism. You know, I quite like my feelings to be real and to be able to get in touch with how I'm feeling knowing that those feelings won't last is okay you know of course we'd all like the, the, the wonderful feelings to last longer but remembering that also the crappy feelings won't last either so you know I think it all kind of evens out and I almost needed to change the way I was thinking I needed to you know because I'm taking medication for the bipolar you know I'm I suppose I could do more things I could exercise more and you know there's more I could do part of my I suppose the thing that gives my life meaning is doing this online, free online service I do, making recordings. But even that wasn't enough. There was, there was something like a feeling of doom. It's very dramatic, isn't it? A feeling of pending doom, and. I was having, you know, I've had heart palpitations and stuff like that. That was kind of how the anxiety was affecting me physically. Um, I was eating a bit more in the way of sweet stuff like chocolate and um, not gorging myself on it, but perhaps eating it quite quickly. So I was getting a lot of sugar into my system a bit too too fast. And then I started to think, well, what's, you know, what has really changed for me? How has this affected me personally? And again, I realised that uh, some would say that's a selfish outlook to just focus on myself, um, which is probably the, the original version of the word selfish is you're thinking about yourself but when you look after yourself and you're you're your own carer in a sense you do have to look out for yourself and think about yourself and make sure you've got what you need and I came to realise that actually my life hasn't really changed that much with what's happened and I know other people's a lot of other people's lives have changed considerably and been affected a lot by this and I do care about that my heart does go out to those people because if this had been six years ago I don't know what I would have done you know, but at the moment I can get through it. But if this had been 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, I'd have been in real trouble. 30 years ago, even. You know, I'd, I would have. What would I have done? How would I have survived? What would I have. How would I have paid the rent or bought food? You know, so I know there's real issues. 
and I looked at my own situation and I'm kind of okay as far as my my daytime routine I'm awake during the night I make recordings work on the website and sleep during the day I don't go out much anyway I never go out socially I mean literally never and so I don't spend time with groups of people we're all lucky when it comes to the internet considering the options that we have now ways of keeping in touch with each other you know through Facebook or whatever different uh, ways we can do it also there's all the different streaming sites like Netflix and Amazon and so we're not haven't got the same limitations that we would have had you know, maybe 15 years ago if this had happened because people who were isolated wouldn't be able to well maybe by phone but that would be it communicate by phone but now we can actually see people can see their loved ones on a picture you know on a, on a phone or however people do it So I started to get in touch with some gratitude for what I do have rather than what I don't have. What I can do rather than what I can't do or what I would like to do. And this situation now is temporary. Just like every mood, every emotion, every feeling you know, every fart is temporary. Everything is temporary. It may be dragging, but it is temporary. It will be over. We will move on, all of us. <laughs> and then people in England will start worrying about Brexit again. You know, so I don't class that as false positivity, it's real, it's reality. It will pass. Every single thing that's ever happened in the history of the world has been temporary, everything passes, every major disaster every wonderful experience everything passes it's all temporary and although you know of course like I said I'm sure all of us would love those wonderful experiences to last maybe forever you know but they don't but neither does the horrible stuff it's all temporary and I'm not so much clinging on to that but just reminding myself gently of that fact this is a temporary blip in our lives and it's also something that we're sharing and there's a lot of people let's say I just talk about my own country. There's a lot of people in England that would class themselves as having no commonality with perhaps their neighbour or the person they see in the street. Well, now we do, although we always have, but we generally, genuinely do. 
because of all being through this experience of having to whether it's self-isolate <clears throat> um, just you know the whole process we've all been you know most of the people in this country received a text message yesterday from the government saying stay indoors and that's something I'm always going to remember not necessarily in a negative way either just in a I was going to say nostalgic way but I don't think nostalgia has to necessarily be a nice feeling I feel nostalgic about times that were at the time horrible but just it's a memory isn't it just remembering it um, with distance and sometimes that distance does help to see things in a different way with a new perspective and some would say why wait why wait for 10 years to look back on what's going on now in order to be able to see that it was temporary to realise that it was temporary maybe we can do that now we can get in touch with the reality that this is temporary just like every panic attack every high anxiety moment is temporary regardless of how many there's been always temporary the, the feeling, the emotion is temporary and the more you embrace that I, I feel personally the more that I embrace that that we can together almost come to terms with what's happening now knowing that it will come to pass it will come to an end and things will just move on the way that life always does we'll just move on to the next thing move on with our lives but maybe we may have learned something perhaps the only thing that humans will learn is to wash their hands more often that might be the only thing but it's going to make some lovely stories in the future it's going to have some horrible stories as well but there's going to be some comical stories of people who will look back on you know people uh filling their trolleys full of toilet roll and then not having to buy any toilet roll for two years because they bought so much during the virus time and then the shops being so full of toilet roll that they're actually selling it really really cheap because they can't sell it because no one needs any anymore they're practically giving it away in the supermarkets I mean that might happen so it's those kind of things that will just be perhaps humorous in the future. I'm not saying that the whole event, obviously not, but just parts. I mean, human beings, we have the ability to see humor in the dark times. And again, why wait? why wait for a year or two years maybe we can see some humour in some situations to you know reduce the stress levels or maybe and I'll be thinking about this and this is seriously thinking is Perhaps spend some time, which is what I'm personally going to do, 
and have been doing watching some comedy shows or comedy films or listening to stand up tapes CDs or on iTunes or you know something like that something that's so distance from what's actually going on to take you away from what's going on and it can be nice to have that respite I always used to think it was rest bite. It's respite, isn't it? Rest, rest bite, rest bite, or whatever. A break. To have a break from all the stuff. And I don't know if any of what I'm talking about has been of use at all. I've got no idea. And I didn't, I'm trying not to talk about this virus in my recordings. I'm trying to be a, a virus free um, podcaster due to the amount of coverage that it's getting everywhere else. But I felt remiss to, you know, I felt as it'd be, how can I just ignore it when I'm doing a podcast about anxiety and stress? How, how could I realistically ignore what's going on and not talk about my experience with what's going on and I've noticed another thing I'm trying to work with this is my anger levels have raised a bit my judgement judging people that are going out judging people that like even family members that met up for, for um, Mother's Day at the weekend just I just find myself internally getting angry and judging them because they're not doing what they should be doing in my mind but that's what happens when when a Prime Minister comes on a TV and says and gives people the option to self-isolate and to um, self-supervise it doesn't work you know people people in these kind of situations you need it to be a law not an option if it's an option people are going to choose what they want to do some people will, you know, think of others. Some people won't. If it's a law, which is kind of how it's become now, then there's clarity. So that, you know, that people will still do what they're going to do. And I'm trying to get my head around that to not get angry and to not be all judgy towards others for thinking or actually for not thinking really I guess and I, I, I did I struggled with it a little bit I probably mentioned it the other day when I did the I did a recording two recordings before this or one before this yeah yeah, two before this some of the uh, almost cavalier response that I've seen in some more elderly people in the 70s even 80s I heard them on the radio some of these people some of these people it sounds bad doesn't it but some some elderly individuals saying that uh, the old saying well if I'm going to get it I'm going to get it and then we're just moving back into superstition and 
uh, almost fatalism um, what will be will be and it was meant to be um, that kind of nonsensical thinking because that's not how the world works you know there's no way in the world if someone stays indoors you know I mean I don't imagine many people have got enough stocks to keep them going but if you stayed indoors for a year and you had enough food to last you for a year and you had no human contact there's no way in the world you're going to catch this thing so it's not what will be what will be it's it's about being careful so I find that winds me up that whole um, well if it's meant to be it was meant to happen that kind of no I forget what the term is that people they don't seem to say it as much as they used to but it's uh, almost uh, it's written in the stars nope it isn't I've looked at the stars there was no writing there there's nothing written about what will happen to you no offence to any astrologists, but, uh, you know, I'm sure it means something to people to do it, but even astrologists will say, you know, that people who read tarot cards, we've still got choice, no one that does that stuff will say uh, that there's no choice, we all have free choice. And my free choice is to to do what the law says I'm supposed to, you know I'm supposed to do, but I'm also choosing to try and keep a bit of light, quite kind of not get too involved in the the negativity of it, and I'm struggling with that a little bit. I am. And that could be part of my condition. It could be part of just who I am as a personality. You know, my personality. It could be because of just the huge onslaught of negative information that I've heard and seen over the last. Well, it's got to be a couple of months now, isn't it? So, I don't know how how I would uh, label this recording. I suppose the it will pass. This is temporary, and also. You know, at the re end of the recordings, I always say, oh, you know, um, be kind to yourself. So that this could be an opportunity to think, how can you be kind to yourself emotionally to increase your sense of comfort, relaxation, to reduce those stress levels those anxiety levels reduced and I, I realise some people could listen to me uh, reading um, a f you know I don't know a telephone directory and feel quite relaxed with my boring voice <laughs> so that, that might be useful not that I'm going to read the telephone directory. I don't know if there are. Do, do telephone directories exist anymore? The yellow pages? I think some, yeah, maybe a little bit. Somewhere. But it's temporary. It's all temporary. 
and what can you feel grateful for? Maybe you know someone that is well. You could feel grateful that your partner, your loved one, your children, your grandparents, parents, whatever, are healthy. Or maybe they have been ill and now they've come through it and they're okay now. You know, there's, there's all these things you can be grateful for but I can't tell you what they are because it's just too personal for each individual. You know, I can't tell you what shoes to wear. I can't tell you what what bra or what dress or what kind of hat will suit you. I don't know. Only or what's going to feel comfortable. Only you know that. In the same way as gratitude. Only you know what you can feel grateful for without it being false. I mean, I could say I'm grateful because I've got a carpet on the floor, but I'm not. <laughs> the reality is I'm not grateful for the carpet being on the floor. I was grateful when I first got the carpet because the floor was cold and covered in paint. And when I got the carpet, I loved my carpet. Andre, my ferret, has ruined the carpet. But I have no emotional connection to the carpet. I've, I did feel a little bit emotional when I first got it. I've never had my own carpet before. Plus it cost me a lot of money. But I'm not grateful for it. I genuinely am not. I suppose if I delved into it, I could find things that I was grateful for. Regarding the carpet, you know, I could put my feet down and I've not, my feet aren't cold, you know, maybe that could be a thing. But I, I prefer to look at things that are more obvious and more real in a sense of, well, I'm grateful for having this place to live, I'm grateful for having the internet things that actually do maybe make my life easier more interesting gives me the opportunity to do things I'm grateful for my bed I love my bed it's very comfortable and I like it a lot um, great you know it's I'm grateful for the books I've got. I'm grateful for having Andre, even though he's a pain in the bum sometimes. But he's also lovely as well. And he keeps me company. Not always, I don't always want company, but he's still, still around all the time. He's around. Either asleep or trying to bite my toes so I'm not particularly grateful for people I have in my life I'll be honest there's not really anyone I really have got in my life that I'm not particularly bothered about on a kind of a regular basis not that I don't care about them but I don't I don't internally feel gratitude towards many people I want to look into it I think okay well this is my friend who now lives in Ireland yeah I got I feel grateful to have them in my life and how they've helped me in the past and um, being an important person in my life so I suppose by delving a little bit deeper I can get into that feeling So I suppose we've all got stuff and I'm, I'm only guessing I can't say that for sure I can't I can't talk on your behalf but I'm 
imagine it. We've all got things that we can be feeling grateful for. We've all got things that maybe we can do to be kind to ourselves. Something that we can all do to make changes, you know? To how we feel. To take a break from the news and you know what other people are talking about. Maybe have a little rest from that. I suppose almost like a an emotional nap. Watch a watch a film that maybe you've wanted to watch. Uh, doesn't have to be a comedy, doesn't have to be anything, because it's your choice. But having a good old laugh can be nice. Seeing something that's just absolutely ridiculous can be fun. It can take your mind in a different direction. And also, phys- physiologically, you know, it it's healthy. And it improves your mood as well. So, you know. Plus, doing relaxation exercises. So there's lots of different things that are available. I've got a lot of relaxation and sleep recordings. As well as the stuff that I do on here. I know that not all my recordings are um, me just talking about. And they're not all the same. I do different kinds of things. Some that are like this, some where I'm perhaps a bit more energetic, other ones where I just am doing a sleep hypnosis recording. I hope between them all they're useful. And if nothing else, just to know that you know you may be in a similar situation to me, you may you know you may be self isolated a lot of the time anyway. Being at home on your own may not be a novel thing. It may not be a new thing. It isn't for me. And hearing people you know, on the TV and on the radio and on the internet, moaning after being self-isolated for a couple of days. And I think, well, I've been doing this for years. I, it's, some people... It, I guess it's, it's hard to get in touch with how another person's feeling, but... Uh, why I find it difficult myself. So I guess it's diff- it's hard for people that are used to going out all the time to suddenly be stuck in their house. But it does make me wonder why have they not made their home a place that they like to be? I know that it's not always that options not available to everyone. I lived in enough rooms to know that, you know, I've lived in places that were never my home. They were just a place to to sleep. But on the same side, there's millions of people that do have homes, whether it's rented or got a mortgage or it's council or. You know, it's lots, millions of people. So it makes me wonder maybe when this is done, when this is over, this temporary blip is completed, perhaps people out there can start to, to look at their own homes and maybe make it a bit more homey, you know, a bit more um, 
comfortable for them to be so that they enjoy being at home perhaps but that's just a, an idea that may not be relevant at all I don't know so I'm going to go and thank you for listening if you're still listening it's just I suppose it's a bit of a ramble a ramble about this current situation but yeah that's it really I think remember you know what I'm going to say remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy keep yourself safe remember this is only temporary it's only temporary genuinely it is you know that really if you think about it you do know that we all know it it's only temporary so take care and I shall speak to you very soon and I'm hopefully going to tomorrow going to do a relaxation hypnosis session I just have to find a time slot when the pigeon's not out and Andre's not out and there's no neighbours in the garden it's just finding a place where I can be quiet you know because I need pretty much silence when I do those recordings if at all possible so take care and I'll speak to you very soon lots of love